Library. My name is Naomi Kane. I am a business major and I am pursuing a concentration in marketing. And I am a one woman team that has created Cheat Code. So, in today's world, we live fast paced lives and we're always looking for the next best thing. For fit minded people, staying active and maintaining a healthy lifestyle are important priorities when it comes to living busy 24 hour days. to get a quick workout in and get on and get out and go on up with their day. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. You're doing such a good job. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so, these, so the only way to the problem the only way to attend these classes is with a specific pair of cycling shoes. And so not all consumers want to purchase an expensive pair of cycling shoes or rent a pair every single time you attend a class because overall the costs are going to add up. Um, and people, so and who, the people that attend these classes, the costs are a little bit expensive, but they don't really mind it because it's just a quick, efficient way to get a workout into your schedule and then you're out. But for the people that do mind it, the shoe, not purchasing the shoe or renting every single time is the problem. Okay. So, that has been overlooked by others because can I is it okay if I kind of look at my notes so I can just get it out yeah. of sure. yeah. okay sorry okay boutique studios and low class clubs have been responsible for the growing and for the recent and continuous growth of fitness of the fitness industry also, Millennials and Generation Z have been the proactive participants in living, in exercising, and living a healthy lifestyle. Because they look to exercise to prevent illness and to live at health. Oh God, I believe. Okay. Okay, so consumers see the most value in cost and time efficiency. So why hasn't anyone created an alternative a practical and cost-effective alternative for a spin shoe. Cheaply is the solution. Consumers no longer have to worry about purchasing or renting a pair of spin shoes because my product is an accessory that slips on and off an existing athletic shoe. It is portable, affordable, customizable, and will can already contain the cleat. So when you purchase a pair of spin shoes, you also have to purchase a cleat that is that fits onto the sole of your shoe that allows you to click into the stationary bike in a fitness class, a fit, in a spin class. Um, most importantly, it will allow the consumers to achieve the workout that they are paying for that they would have if they purchased or rented a pair of shoes. So they also have an alternative if you don't buy a shoe or rent a pair of shoes, they have kind of like a, a foot pocket under the pedal. So there's one side is a pedal that you can click into it with your shoe, and the other side is a way that you can slide your shoe in. But that way, you don't get the workout that you're paying for. So if you're spending a lot of money, that's not going like, to benefit you at all. And then this is the solution. So these are what they look like. They're portable, so they're easy to carry on and off, and they're ready to like go on the go with. And then that's the cleat. These are just ideas, but I also have a and then resources. I, for, to get this started, I would like to prototype it or get a pattern it to, and then see if there's anything similar to, like this out there. But for all the research I've done, there hasn't been. Um, design, to get the perfect design, I would spend as much money as I could. So the, so the initial startup cost would be 4450 
I guess. Um, and then raw materials, I'm looking at like rubbers and plastics. And then uh, I want there to be, so the cleat will already be built into the apparatus because it's, it'll be just easier for the consumer if they don't have to go out and buy a pair of the cleat and the shoe. Um, that's it. Thank you. All right. All right, great time for questions. Okay. Oh, wait, I have to show you. Oh, sure. Okay, so I got um, my friend a 3D um, print this, and it's not actual size, but basically your foot is going to be here, the sole of your foot is here, and then under this would be where the cleat is, and then this part would wrap around up here, and then this part would. So, and then these straps would go up around your shoe, so like this part and fasten, and then this part would come up behind your heel to fasten. And then they're gonna be like, they'd be in like trendy colors so people can match it with like their outfits because like fitness people are always into like Lululemon or the Soul Cycle brands, like all that gear. So it'd be like trendy. And yeah, that's it. Are the plates on all of the cycling machines the same? Okay, that's what I was going to say. Um, so for indoor cycling, they have, they use pretty, all studios use basically the same cleat. So that's why I wanted to already have it built into my prototype or my product. Um, and it's like an SVD cleat. It, it's the same locking mechanism and the same actual cleat. It, it'll work for those. How much would you sell it for? I want it so the so for buying a pair of nice cycling shoes, it's like a couple hundred. And then for renting a pair every single time you go to the class, it's two bit two to five dollars every single time. But usually, if you're attending the class, you're going to like twice a week for every week. So just overall, it's going to keep adding up. So I want to price mine between twenty like twenty five to thirty dollars for a one time purchase. And if you want like different colors or anything. Get different colors and make another purchase. That's actually a good price because that's what I was trying to figure out. It's like how you could look second shoes can cost and they have a big yeah. range then you buy your cleats. And I was thinking, all right, if you're if you're spending two dollars for a rental, how many rentals does it take for yeah. makes it breaks even? But then there's also you take a little bit of a hit in performance because of the flexibility of the sole. Yeah. And so uh, can you talk about that a little bit? So or actually can you explain to these guys if, do you, are you into uh maybe that's a good question. Explain, explain to them how that works. Okay, so if you're just pedaling with no uh, locking mechanism, you're you're only pushing down. You're not bringing your leg up and rotating it. So you're only using a part, like just a couple of parts of your leg. So you're not getting like the full benefits of having the cleat on the shoe. So even though you don't have the shoe and it's not as um, like uh, sturdy. sturdy it's still gonna give you like the pull up, and you're still gonna get like the whole um, workout. And if you, and if you're going to the class, you're gonna want to have a, at least have some of the benefits of paying for it and uh, using these. How would you compete with <clears throat> SoulCycle now in Boston doesn't charge for renting shoes? Yes. Well, then you have to. Oh, really? How many yeah. classes? Uh, I mean, it depends. So usually you don't buy them um, individually. So usually people buy packs. Yeah. Uh, it averages around 26 to 34, like you had in a first class. So if you buy individual classes, 34, but they sell 10 packs for a 20% discount. Yeah. Um, and they give away free shoes. Uh, the other big thing, so I haven't felt on it at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, what I was. Can I say something? Sure. Okay, so also if you're going to, this is just like an idea, but if you're going to do. Um, with like technology and everything, you can do at home classes and watch somebody on the, the screen. But you can still use, uh, if you're buying an expensive bike, you can still use these just to kind of cut down the cost a little bit than buying another pair of shoes. Unless you're like an advocate for like spinning and you already have them. Yeah, I think the hardest challenge you'll face in this market is exactly the last yeah. point you just made. I think anybody who spins or anybody who's into like you'll you'll have a hard time convincing people that go to uh, yoga classes yeah. in Back Bay to not buy Lululemon or not spend yeah, eighty dollars exactly. on a mat, right? Because mats yeah. should cost twenty five bucks, and yeah. it probably cost them six to make. Mm -hmm. But 
is sell for 90 because that's the trend that yeah. everybody's mm-hmm. going. It's almost like the white iPod years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's you, you're going to have that marketing yeah. challenge of getting beyond and trying to sell to people and say, hey, you're attending this yeah. expensive class for 25 bucks. Why don't you save three dollars on you know, not renting yeah. a shoe, right? So I think from a marketing messaging standpoint, you want to maybe think I was outside thinking of that box. I'm kind of <coughs> aiming towards like my generation and uh, and lower because like <coughs> they, most they're probably not buying spin shoes, and I think that the fact that these could be customizable, like they could get like different colors, because. Also, when you buy a pair of cycling shoes, they're gonna be like, there's not really like a variety of colors, I feel like. They're more, it's mostly like black or like gray or have a little red or a little something, but these are gonna be like kind of vibrant, trendy, not vibrant colors. And I think that they, I think that would be more attractive to them. Um, yeah. How flexible is the material? Like I road bike and the clipping out can you really have to kind of like clip out hard? Yeah. And I've tried spin once. And I'm, one of the things I'm thinking about is if if you go to clip out with these, depending on the flexibility of the material, yeah. your shoe may twist, but the yeah. clip may not. Well, I have so so I haven't actually have um, I haven't really decided what exactly the material would be, but I know I just, it needs to be like a durable rubber, but also like be able to support. The twisting and yeah. like being able to, and not be able to move or like unhook out under your heel. So I'm still like working on like designs and everything, but I I under, like I know what it needs to have or like the benefits, like the the features and the materials that need to like get in like work for it. Because I think it would be cool for road biking, but I never trust my life with that. Because yeah. when you road bike, you have to clip on. You you bike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like I got my clip on last year for the first time. I did the usual, like I fell twice and then you never fall again. But I'd be concerned about. Yeah, well, that's why I, I think I'm going to hit that. That's why I would put it into just indoor spinning or just for like stationary bikes mm-hmm. to start with. And then if something else happens, it turns out. So the actual clip, so I'm, I'm just intrigued with this because I'm in the middle of the dilemma. Mm-hmm. I want to go to a spin class. I have my clip on my shoes. Yeah. Do they fit from road biking? Do they yeah? Do they fit on the bike in the spin class? Yeah. Okay. So there's a so. I've been and I've seen it. It doesn't look like it matches my. It's a mountain bike. Yeah. It's like a mountain bike clip. (coughs) Not a road bike. It's not a road bike. Yeah. And they have two separate clips. So they have the SPD clip. I think they have a G GRA or or, uh, a new kind of clip. So Peloton uses the GRA clip. So if you have the spin shoes that aren't kind of like that. Yeah. So I think I think the. Yeah, it, 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 it depends on the, the type of class you go to. It depends on the, the technology of the bikes you have, right? I think one of the things that you may want to look into is what Otter, um, the phone case does with iPhones, right? They have a deal worked out with iPhone where it's always, it, it, they know before a new iPhone comes out, so they're, they're not sitting on a whole bunch of um, yeah. uh, raw materials for making cases for iPhones that are not coming out anymore or Samsung that are not coming out anymore. So. You are going to go forward and say, "Yeah, I would try and get in touch with SoulCycle or uh, yeah. or any of the classes that, or um, SoulCycle or Turnstile, and instead of them giving away shoes or instead of them letting shoes yeah. be rented for free, have them do this because it's more cost effective for them yeah. uh, versus them giving shoes away and then you know having to maintain different sizes of shoes. Now they can just maintain yeah. this and not buy different sizes of shoes for mm-hmm. everyone." The other big issue you'll have is <coughs> spin shoes um, are harder in the back, yeah. right? Because uh, one, the point you made of, of being able to flex up, mm-hmm. whereas running shoes have flexion because yeah. you, you're kind of heel to toe, you're not heel to toe yeah. in, in spin. So having a clip in the back with flexion puts too much strain on your um, Achilles heel. So you'll be more prone, um, well, especially the- if you have a clip on the back because all you're doing is this and the shoe is not stable enough in the back. Are you talking about, so? He's talking about the rigidity of the sole. Yeah, the back is. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was going to be my question, <coughs> too, is are there health issues associated with not having that rigidity there? You know, it was there for a reason, so mm-hmm. if, we, if we remove the rigidity, are you more prone to injury? And what precautions need to be taken by the people wearing mm-hmm. them versus yeah. the other pair of shoes? 
maximal performance. So if you have if you wear bike shoes, you get like this whole, supposedly 10 to 15 percent better performance. So you're more efficient by having that rig, that, rig, that rigid bottom. Mm -hmm. But so my problem is I can't cook, so I have a pair of shoes. There's no way I'm going out buying another pair of shoes just for a spin class. Yeah. Right. So you're talking to me, right? Because yeah. I'm cheap. I'm not so great. <laughs> and then and then if you tell me if I go to different classes, different places, I gotta do a different clip. Well, they're usually all indoor cycling classes, you, you have the, the same, same clip. clip. Okay. And there's also but different... But it's not mine. Right? It's not a road. road. It's, not no. a road it's road. a mountain bike clip, isn't it? It's a mountain bike. Yeah. So that's like the... Won't go that doesn't... Is, right. The, the, so, the GRA clip, so it's it's the three-prong in the front now. It's like, it looks like a baseball cleat on yeah, the so why would a... Why would a mountain biker go to a spin class? They don't do much miles. <laughs> the road guys, right? They're going, they're going up hills 25 miles. So <laughs> you might be doing that in spin class too. Right? Right? No, oh, you're trying to kill I've you. Got, I've got this going. <laughs> It'll crush you. I, I need, I need your product. I mean, I'm not going to go buy a pair of shoes. So, and I don't care. I, it can be any color, but I think the switch out um, is going to be an issue. When I look at when I look at your prototype concept, I think of my uh, micro spikes for hiking. You know, yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if that's. I, I, I kind of came up with this idea, and then when I was I was like talking with my mom about it, and she was looking up like harness ideas for like shoes, and then um, the spike hiking thing mm -hmm. came up, and yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, that's and those are those come on pretty pretty tight. I don't yeah. know what the clip on, and because there is pressure down. Uh, but pulling up, you're going to have some tug. So, yeah, so the old spin uh, pedals used to have the cage around them, right, where you mm -hmm. can slide your shoe into. Well, that's what I used to have on my, my old yeah. mountain bike. It just looks yeah. like a harness. Yeah, but when you, so a lot of spin is a lot of sitting and standing and sitting and standing, so they don't want yeah. you to kind of do one of these while you're standing. Right. Uh, so that's why they take the cage away, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you're solving a good problem. I think yeah. you want to think through the. Uh, like you never want to get into a business where someone else has your product that you're selling. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Soul Cycle could just say, "Well, I just give away free shoes, and everything you yeah. water pour up until that point becomes not yeah. needed anymore." Yes and no. Shoes, I think, are a very personal thing. Fair people, people don't want to put on other people's shoes. Yeah. Well, what are you doing instead? So there's another one more question. One more question. I guess okay. another comment. <laughs> After your millennials and whoever coming after the millennials, um, you know, so just very broad statement. You know, I sold my house last January and I felt I sold, I sent out, I don't know, four or five dumpsters of 25 years of junk, mm -hmm. right? So I think your generation, you people are going to be more focused on material and you don't want, you don't want three or four pairs of shoes. Yeah. So this, could go to a market if you got it down saying, you know, it's ridiculous, you know, you could say it's ridiculous that these people are renting shoes, they get rent. it's like going to a bowling alley, mm -hmm. right? So what do they do with those shoes? Yeah. Well, they throw them out, they don't recycle them, so you can talk about the minimalistic design here, and if you could engineer it properly, that, that's maybe what you want to add yeah. to your team, someone who could really do with the materials and, um, would be it would be a good product. It wouldn't be wasteful. It'd be something to be reused mm -hmm. and cheap. And and the heck with these guys selling, giving away free shoes. Yeah. You're gonna say, hey, what do I need free shoes for? I, I mean, I got a closet full of 20 pairs of shoes mm -hmm. that I don't even use. Yeah. I think that's what we did to you. Well, that's the plan that we left you. Mm -hmm. right? So you people, <laughs> I think, are much yeah. more yeah. focused on something broader yeah. and bigger, and I think that would be an interesting approach in how you promote this product. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.